Hello and welcome to another tutorial from MoICT. In this tutorial, we're going to be making a one-line jokes viewing app. Uh, so the purpose of this app is to uh, load the jokes from a text file. And then um, as we are progressing through, it will load all the jokes into a list box and it will read the text file line by line. right? And then as we are selecting the jokes from that list box, or uh, we also have a timer that uh, allows us to sort of, um, when we click start, it will start changing the jokes on the screen one after the other every two seconds. Okay, so let's just take a look at how this app works. So the first thing you'll notice in the app is that uh, the font is actually changed. So what we've done is we um, allowed the application to read a custom font and to load it up. So this one looks like a little bit of like a handwriting. So I thought we add a little bit of a character to the application. So let's just load up the text file. So in, the, in my C drive, I have a text folder and inside of there, there's a um, text file called 101 jokes. Then if I just load that up, okay, so all the jokes are loaded inside of this list box. So it reads the text file and then it separates um, each paragraph inside the text file and then it loads it into a list and then it populates the list box. Okay, so if I select one of them, it will simply just change, um, you know, change the joke. So uh, I'm selecting number three. So I fell math so many times at school, I can't even count. Okay, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit more like a dad joke kind of thing. But I suppose this kind of fits into the application that we want to make because a lot of times we make applications that need to read text files and this is be one good example of how to properly read a text file um, by loading it into C Sharp and Windows Form. Okay, and we also have another feature of this application where if I click start, right, um, you'll notice that it starts from the top and then every two seconds it will change the joke down, right, so it will go all the way through to the end and it will stop when it's right at the end. Okay, so instead of waiting for that to go, um, so you can also stop the timer if you want, and then it will, you know, if you click start, it will start back from the top again. Okay, so we're gonna be making this application uh, using Windows Form, .NET and C Sharp. So let's go ahead and make a new project in Visual Studio. Okay, so in this window, um, click on create a new project. I'm gonna choose the Windows Form .NET app, another uh, .NET framework one. Click next, I'm gonna name this one. Um, so I'm gonna name it, read one line jokes app, Windows Form, more ICT. Click next, uh, .NET 6 is fine, click create. Okay, so our project is now set. Um, I'm just gonna minimize this for a quick second. So um, as we start, uh, what I've done is um, on the Mua City website, I've linked a zip file with these three files in there. So you have got the 101 jokes um, text file alongside with the background that we're gonna be using. Okay, so it's this background here. Okay, that we're gonna be using. And also there is a custom font called Rainbow Paper. Okay, so before we start, if you want to um, download those um, assets and extract them, so we can actually use them in the application. So the first one that we're going to use is the background image. So first, let's go to the form and let's change some of the stuff here. So I'm just going to change the text here to read online jokes. No ICT. Okay, so that just stays there. And I want to change the size of the form to 600 comma 600 so it's just a 600 by 600 application uh, let's go ahead and set the background image so under the project resource file let's go import the background image right here okay so the image looks slightly bigger so what we're going to do is just going to set it to stretch so it fits in nicely with the um, application window Okay, second thing to do is um, we need to copy this font file to the actual Visual Studio folder. Okay, so, if I, so inside the Solutions Explorer, after you copied the file, um, just go to the Solutions Explorer, right click, say open folder in File Explorer. So that will open the actual project folder. Go to bin, debug, .NET 6 windows, and then just paste the um, font file here okay so we should be able to access it directly from there 
right so right in the application here right now um, let's go and add a label so this is going to be our main label where the jokes are going to be um, displayed so I'll just say here get a joke all right and then we're gonna actually no we don't need the font as the back color one so back color we're gonna set that to transparent okay and then lastly we're gonna need to set the auto size to false okay then just make sure you stretch it out okay, go, go from corner to corner that's even better okay and then actually if I go to font I can make it slightly bigger here just to see what it is going to look like uh, we'll set the size and the font in the code a little bit later on uh, so set, still in the properties window just go to the text line and then just click on the middle here so it's padded right in the middle of that space okay and we're gonna name this one LBL joke okay so now we need a list box okay just place the list box one under and then we can stretch it out to it here so it matches with the top box okay need two buttons so I'm just do one button first okay so this one we can say open oh. actually let's name this one to btm open and then change the text here to open Okay, so if I copy and paste this button now. Okay. Right. And just place it here. And this one, text can be start. Okay, so those are the two buttons that we need. And last thing we're going to need is a timer. Okay, so the timer gets added here. We'll just call this one. Timer lowercase timer is fine. Let's set interval to a 2000. So that's um, how often the jokes are going to change on the screen. So you can also make it faster. Uh, to make sorry to make it faster, you can always reduce the number down. Right, and we'll have a go at that one later on as well. Okay. So uh, we need to add an event with the timer. Let's call this one timer event. Then press enter. So the event gets added here. Uh, and then if you click on the um, open button, uh, I'll click here. So say load file. Okay. Then I'm going to call this one start timer for the start button. Okay. So we have timer event, load file, and start timer. Okay, and lastly, we also need a event for the list box. So the list box event is going to be um, just the selected index changed, right? So any index that is changed, we want to get that index value and then assign it to that label here. Okay, so we're going to go back here. Let's say, where do you go? There it is. Okay, so I'm just say change joke list box. Okay, change joke list box, that's fine. All right, so there we have our four events that we need. So right at the top here before the namespace, um, I'm just going to make some space here right now. And then we're going to say here using system or drawing or text because we need to use a, a private font collection class. So and that class is inside of that text namespace here. Okay, so I'm just going to start with the variables. Uh, first one is, let's call this one line num is equals to minus one. Okay, and then let's say private font collection. Okay, and we'll call this one new font equals uh, new private font collection. Okay, so the private font collection class will allow us to load a 
um, external file and then we can assign that to certain um, text inside the application okay and the last one we're going to need is called boolean playing we can just set that to false for now okay so um, this is the class constructor right so this is what loads first from the application so right under the initialize component i'm just going to make some space and right here i'm going to say um new font add font file like so and actually i need the font file name so i'm going to go back to the solutions explorer go to the open folder in file, ex file explorer go to bin debug and then just copy the name of this file here let's just close that for now inside quotations it's going to be dot ttf okay so that's the extension for the font files okay if you're unsure about it um, you can always take a look at the extension file name extension there so as you can see it shows ttf file right at the end okay so we need that because otherwise that window is not going to know what kind of file this is so now let's set the font to the label right so we're going to say mdl joke dot font right it's equals to new font inside of here we can reference the new font that we just created new font dot families and then we can always say families dot zero so families is an array right so what we're doing here is we're just calling the main um, font that's available inside of this one okay and um, Visual Studio has completed that line for us already so font style bold that's fine uh, what we also need is a size so we're gonna say here 24 in the middle so you've got your uh, font family font em size and then your font style okay so with that being done um, we can run this application now to see if the font actually loads okay so if you look at that one and then that one the font is actually loading nicely okay excellent so we're going to start with the um, load file event here so this is the um, open button so what we want to do is we want to be able to open the files and then obviously see if you populate the list box alongside with creating a list inside of it okay so it's going to you can say open text file first make some space here okay so we can say open file dialog okay new open file dialog is fine open file dot initial directory is equals to um, let's say at c forward slash txt because okay, that's where my file is so if your file is in a different directory you can just you know pick c well with the good thing about this one is it's not just set to that directory you can always go to a different directory but this is just the initial one that it loads okay all right so we're just gonna go ahead and I'll say open the file dot title is going to be equals to I'm just going to remind people that this is only to browse text files okay and then say open file dot filter is equals to text files only so instead of here we just say dot txt like so so it's a bit more obvious on what we're looking for and then so this part here is just the text that shows and this part after the pipe symbol is going to be the actual um, filter okay so now we do the star okay and that ends that one for us let's say open file dot default txt so the default one that we're actually looking for right, and then this is just going to be the txt there all right so with that being done now we can just do the if so right now we're going to say if open file show dialog is equals equal dialog box to okay so um dialog result to okay all right so if the okay button was pressed First thing we need to do is to say listbox one dot item dot clear. So clears everything from inside of the list box. Just in case there is something else in there. 
Okay, so say this box. Um, now, <clears throat> in order to load the lines um, to the list box, what we need to do is we need to create a separate variable where we save the file location, and then we also need to create a list where we need to import the file location to it. Okay, so let's create a variable here. Just the bar call file location is equals to file the read lines read all lines okay and then inside of the brackets here is a open dot file name okay so that's going to read all the lines so it's not going to read the um, word for word or as a whole text file it's going to read each paragraph okay and then let's create a new list string yeah string is fine string lines yeah, it's fine okay you gotta love Visual Studio sometimes when he actually figures out what you try to do before you try to do it. Okay, and inside the um, brackets here for the last bracket, we're gonna say file location. So we're loading all the lines that has been read into the variable and then we're loading it into the list here. Okay, and now we need to do a for loop for i is zero, that's fine, and then lines.count. So, however many lines have been loaded in there. Now we can actually start um, populating the list box. List box one dot items dot add and then I'm just gonna pass in the i. Oh sorry not the i lines the i okay so the lines is the string here uh, the, the list of strings right so it's uh, pretty much like an uh, basically an array of uh, lots of different strings and then as we are looping through all of them one by one uh, this is going to increment from zero to one to three to four so however much uh, however many lines that we collected from the file here it will list all of them inside the list box for us after we um, done loading the file so let's go and run this application so it loads up there click open so now it loads it up onto the txt folder for us and then i can just go to 101 jokes and as you can see it's loaded each of them inside of here okay then it put the button there and say 101 right there okay perfect okay, so uh, from this function now let's go ahead and do this one because there's only one line to do for this one so we can say lbl joke dot text is equals to list box one dot selected item dot to string so right so whichever item is selected is just going to pass that value to the list um to the label here okay so this way we can actually manually view the jokes open so let's load up the jokes here so if i click on that one or whichever one it actually loads it up so i was wondering why the frisbee keeps getting bigger and bigger but then it hit me okay all right um yep so i can click on 78 click on 90 oh 90 yeah um how do you make holy water wonder, okay oh, that's, that's quite funny um all right so okay that's working nicely okay um so let's do the timer event here all right so let's go ahead and add the stuff to the timer event so the timer event um only matters when you actually click on the start button so the start button will basically figure out whether the game um, is already started or stopped and then it will start the timer or stop the timer depending on where we are and the timer event is basically going to trigger the list box to say you know set this item um, as active and then the list box will obviously you know uh, go trigger the event and the event will then um, change the label for us right so it's um, quite a neat way to do it so let's go ahead and figure out how to do that so to do if here so first thing i'm going to say is if playing is equal to goes true right so if the playing boolean is true which we set here first and what we also want to do is to say and line number is still less than list box one so items dot count minus one so the line number hasn't gone past the uh, number of available items inside so the reason we're doing a minus one is basically like a safeguarding so the line number doesn't go past the number of items that we have available in the list box okay so if both of those statements are true we make the same line num plus plus 
and then we're going to say list box one dot selected oops sorry set selected set selected here and then inside the select set selected we can say line num because that will just take a integer value to see which one to activate and also we need to say true so what the last line of true will do is it will set that particular index active and then which then will trigger this event here for us okay and if none of these statements are true we can simply go ahead and say line num set b equals true minus one again playing is equals to false and we see timer dot stop and um, should I have renamed the other button did we? We did not. There we are. Okay, so we have time to name this one so BTN start, right? So if I name this one BTN start so that way it would, the code will be slightly more readable. Okay, so BTN start dot text is going to basically say start here so at the moment we have got a if statement with an else attached to it so if playing is equals true and uh, the line number is still inside the bounds of the list box then we're going to add one to the line number so that is every two seconds right so if it goes to one it's going to go to two after two seconds and three right and as the line number is changing uh, so um, this is going to activate whichever index is available to that. So if it goes to zero, to one, to three, this is why we set it to minus one. So every time it increments, it goes to zero and then one to three, because um, in programming, the array, always, array or array list always starts from zero. So the first value isn't one, the first value is always zero, right? So if we start this one from one, uh, we're going to always miss the first entry of any list box. So let's do the start button event here. So I'm going to say first is let's make some space for this. Um, playing is equals equals false, right? So if the playing boolean is false, inside of here we're going to say another if here. So let's say list box one um, dot items dot count is greater than zero. So we do have at this point if we still have um, some items in the list box, so the list box has been populated. Basically, we can say playing is equals to true. Right and timer dot start. Okay, and we can also say btn start dot text set that to stop. Okay, so the same button will start and stop the timer. Okay, so now if um, if this condition is not true, so that means the um, list box hasn't been populated. We need to remind the user to select a text file. Okay, so let's say else. This is box.show. So instead of this, we're going to say um, select a text file first. Okay. And then we just um, give it a title on the uh, message box. So this is the message here. And then the second part after the comma is the title. So we're just going to say move, says. Okay. So that's going to show up if. Um, no text file was loaded okay okay so after the main if statement here they're saying if playing is equals to false but if it is true so then we can just run a else statement here so in the else statement we're going to just say timer dot stop okay and btn start dot text is going to be equals to start and set playing equals to false okay so uh, basically it's like a, a nesting if statement so if first of all if the when we click the button if the playing is equals to false then we're going to check if the list box has been populated if so then we're going to set it to true so start the timer and then change the um, text of the button if not then we're just going to show a message box to say you know select a you know text file first and then um, if the playing is equals to true, when we click the button, then we're just gonna stop the timer, change the text to start, and then set playing to false. Okay, um, that's about it really, I think. Yeah, we've got this one, uh, we've done this one, and we have done this one. Okay, 
So we're going to have to run the application now. Okay, let's see if the jokes work. So click on open. Actually, before we start open, I'm going to try the start button here. So click start. As you can see, now the message box is selected text file first. Okay, it keeps saying that. So now we stop the joke. And then now if I click start, the text changes and then it goes back to the top. And then it starts going downwards. Okay, so um, just to save some time, what we can do here is we're going to set the interval of this one to make it a bit quicker. So we can set it to like half a second maybe. Or yeah, half a second is fine. So we'll set that to like 500 for now. So when we click start, it runs the uh, timer faster. So it goes through the jokes faster. So I'm going to loading up the onboard jokes. Click start. Okay, actually all the jokes are fitting into the lines properly as well. So it's quite hard to read when it um, goes through so fast. So that's why we set it to two seconds. So that was a 2000 millisecond on the timer. Okay, fantastic. So now it goes to right the end. So, and then it obviously stops and it changes the button's text to start instead of stop. So now if I start again, it will go from the top to the bottom. Okay, so this has been a fun program to actually make in Windows Form and hopefully you find this program helpful and I will see you on the next one.